Did you know that as a notary public, a public servant, we have the right to refuse service for certain instances? Well, if you didn't know it today, I'm going to share reasons why you, the notary, can refuse service to an individual for their notary appointment. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Amber On Demand. My name is Amber and I'm the lead educator at the Notary Academy. And I also use this channel to encourage you and motivate you to start your business in whatever it is that you want to start your business in. And then I also talk a little bit about my nonprofit and other things happening in the world of Amber On Demand. So let's get into it. Today, I wanna to talk about a serious topic. A lot of notaries have come to my emails and some of my DMs asking me, is there ever a time that they cannot do an appointment or what happens if you don't want to do an appointment? Do we have the right to refuse service? So let's get right into the reasons. Reason number one would be lack of proper identification. As a notary, our primary purpose is to identify the identity of our clients. And we do that by taking a look and inspecting their government issued ID to match it up with what they look like. And then we can also ask them a few questions that they should already know about themselves. So if they come to the appointment or arrive at the appointment and they do not have a physical identification, then you cannot complete that notary service. You cannot accept a copy. You cannot accept a picture on a phone. You cannot accept a fax. It must be the physical copy of either of a government issued ID. So types of IDs that you can accept and they do vary a little bit by state are a state issued ID card, a driver's license, a US passport, a resident alien card, meaning anyone who has like a visa that are immigrants staying in the United States, but they are permitted legally. You can use those type of identification cards. What you're looking for on these identification cards is it needs to have a photograph of your client so that you can match it up to who's sitting in front of you. Next, it needs to have their information such as name, date of birth, and when that particular document expires. During COVID times, the um, Secretary of State did allow us to accept uh, expired IDs. However, that is not the case now, at least for most or if not all the states now, it has to be a valid unexpired ID. The next thing you're going to look for is to make sure there's a signature on the ID so that you can compare it to the signature on the document. That is reason number one. Let's get into the next one. The next reason that you can refuse service to your client is your uncertainty with their willingness to sign or their knowledge of the document. Your client must demonstrate that they understand what the documents are, the contents of the document, and their willingness to sign. You can figure this information out very quickly just by asking them a few questions about the document, stating or specifically asking them, do you understand the contents of this document? If you, the notary, ever suspect that your client is being coerced or under duress, meaning they're intimidated by someone to sign the document, it is our duty to stop the appointment at that time and not follow through to protect our clients. In addition to that, you'll wanna make sure they have the mental capacity to understand the document. So when you're asking them questions about what's in the document and do they understand the legal implications of signing the document, if it seems they don't understand or that they're not mentally capable, then you're going to have to uh, come back to the drawing board and speak to maybe someone that is a caretaker or someone that assists that client and see if there are any power of attorneys involved um, and go that route. But you should never have someone sign a document if they're looking like they're intimidated, they're mentally challenged, and it doesn't seem like they even understand what's going on, or they're just not willing to sign it. So that's another reason why you, the notary, can refuse service. Number three on the list of reasons why you can refuse service as a notary is incomplete documents. If there are blanks in a document, you are going to ask your customer or your client to fill in those blanks at that time. Now, if they say they don't know what to put in the blanks and ask you what you should put in the blanks, you are not permitted to give them that answer because notaries do not give legal advice and telling them what to put in the blank would be construed as giving legal advice. 
If they refuse to write in the blank, then that moment you will be able to refuse the notarization. The reason behind this is fraudulent activity is high in the notarization industry. So those that come in with a blank document and ask you to notarize, they can easily change the information within those blanks at a later time, which in turn could produce fraudulent activity. So of course you guys know our other purpose besides gathering IDs and properly identifying a person is to prevent fraud. And so that is one of the main ways to prevent fraud is making sure that each blank is filled in properly before we sign, before we notarize the document. Before signing the document and notarizing it, you, the notary, must ensure you go over the document one to two times to ensure there no, that there are no blanks left behind. It only takes a couple seconds to one minute to do this. You'll want to do this as a habit to make sure you're covering yourself and you're protecting your client. Reason number four, a notary may refuse service to their client is conflict of interest. We, the notary, must act as an impartial witness to the signing. If there's ever a time where you, the notary, has personal interest in the document or may receive any kind of financial gain or benefit, then at that moment, you will not be able to also notarize that document. For example, if your name is listed in any anywhere in a power of attorney, anywhere in the document other than the notary, then you will need to stop that notarization and have a different notary come in and complete that notarization. Notarizing a document where you have interest or benefit can be considered as unethical and against the law. So you want to make sure you're not crossing the line and doing anything that could cause suspicion or cause anyone to bring you to court over a document you notarized where your name is also mentioned in the document. Play it safe. Don't do it. Take my advice. While we're on the subject of conflict of interest, um, there are lots of different um, answers that you will hear if someone asks you if you can notarize a document for a family member. And so again, you have to think about that conflict of interest. Now, some states, there isn't anywhere that it prohibits it. However, it is recommended not to do. And I like to always stick to the side of making sure I am fully compliant, ethical, doing all of those things. And so for family members, I tend to not notarize the document. I will allow a notary friend or a notary buddy do it for me. However, again, check your state laws. It could be possible to notarize for a family member, but just remember, have that ethical um, statement in the back of your mind of whether you want to be ethical. And if someone was to bring this up later in court, do you really want to be sitting there in court over notarizing a document for a family member? If you don't mind, then that might be something you might want to do. The last reason that you may refuse service for an individual for a notary service is your safety. If you're ever in a, at an appointment and you feel unsafe or uneasy, you have to prioritize your safety and you may refuse a notarization at that point. You can get up and leave. You do not have to give a reason if you feel unsafe. If you found this video helpful and useful, please comment down below. I'm happy to engage with you. If you are yourself looking for information about how to become a notary, foundation of notary, how to create a notary business, you can head on to the link down below at our website, www.thenotaryacademy.net, where I am the lead educator there, and I'm happy to be part of your notary journey. I'll see you guys at the next one. Have a great day.